Welcome to Making a Stuart Model Steam Plant, this is part 31 and in this episode I'm modifying the exhaust manifold and making a special hardwood base for the Stuart Model's 10V steam engine. What I need to do is move the exhaust outlet from the one on the end that has the nut on it to a side mounted one which will allow the exhaust steam to be fed directly into the condenser without having to use a piece of bent copper pipe. In this clip I've made a mark on the end of the square block, which looks to me to be in the middle of the block. So now, with the help of my Proxon motor tool and a very small drill bit, I'm drilling a pilot hole in the block. I'm doing it this way because if the block turns out to be too thin, I can simply plug the hole. Thankfully the square block is substantial and there's plenty of metal to use for a thread. I'm now drilling the hole using a much larger drill bit. This one is 9 30 seconds of an inch in diameter which is tapping size for a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch thread. Once I drill the main hole that I'm going to thread I use a smaller drill bit to drill down the end to clear any burrs. I carefully removed the cloth that I put around the engine to catch all the swarf and then blew the rest of the particles away with an airline. Not forgetting to wear some eye protection. Here I'm threading the hole using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap and I'm making sure that I'm tapping this hole very squarely. If the tap isn't square into the hole then when you put the part together it will be wonky. To complete the job I blow away the swarf using the airline once again. In this clip I'm removing the union nut off the end. I need to block the end of this thread with a non-destructive method and here's the best way to do it. Just put a stainless steel ball in the union nut and tighten the union nut back in place. This is a very simple and effective solution for blanking off the end of fittings. And while on the subject of fittings, now I need to make a special fitting for the thread in the block. I'm using a commercial double union fitting which is 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. I screwed the fitting into a union nut and then clamped the union nut in the chuck. It wasn't perfectly concentric, but it doesn't need to be, I'm only facing off the end of it. And here is a successfully machined fitting. Next job, apply some Loctite 542, which is the red stuff, to seal the thread. I've also fitted a copper washer because it just looks like it needs a copper washer. This fitting would be steam tight with just the Loctite 542 on its own. Now I have a side exit fitting in the exhaust manifold, I'm going to show you what I need to do next. I'm going to make a special hardwood base for the engine and I need to make sure that the height of the base makes it so that the fitting on the exhaust manifold is perfectly in line with the fitting on the condenser. To make the base I'm going to use some pieces of mahogany, three pieces of mahogany to be exact. I'm going to chop a long length into three parts and stick the three pieces of wood together. First there was one piece of mahogany and then there were three. I intend to stick these pieces of mahogany together using epoxy resin, not wood glue. I want this to be a perfectly waterproof base. I would normally use half hour epoxy, but to speed up the job, I use the five minute type. Here, I'm putting the first part onto a piece of wood, followed by the second part. As usual, I'm mixing slightly more than I need, because there's nothing worse than running out of epoxy resin halfway through a job. And it's really, really bad if you're using 5 minute epoxy, because by the time you've applied what you first mixed and then mixed some more, the first part is starting to go off. And that's my logic and a good excuse for why I always make too much of the mixture. I'm applying a generous coat of this epoxy resin to two of the pieces of wood. It's not really going to be a problem if the epoxy resin oozes out of the joints, because once the part is completed, I'll be initially using my 4 inch belt sander to clean up the surfaces of the wood. And later on I'll be using the belt sander to just make this base very slightly smaller so that the pipes line up from the exhaust into the condenser. It's no good waiting until the epoxy resin cures with the pieces of wood in this position. They need to be sat on a flat surface. And very conveniently I'm using the metal base plate that I bought for the boiler. Before the epoxy resin sets, I'm spreading what's left of it on one side of the base. And before I leave the epoxy resin to cure, I'm just checking that the parts are in line by using a ruler on the end. At this point I'd like to issue a health and safety warning. 
Do not touch this epoxy resin, it's not nice stuff to get on your skin. I would always wash my hands thoroughly with an industrial cleaner after using epoxy resins and other chemicals. My original idea was to use some of these doll's house bricks around the base, but the more I look at it, the more I dislike it. The customer sent me these bricks along with a lot of doll's house floor tiles and has requested that I cover the entire base with the floor tiles. But I think it will be a complete doll's house floor tile and brick overload. So I'm not going to use the bricks around the base like this. Sufficient time has elapsed, much more than five minutes, and the epoxy resin has fully cured, so now I can cut the base to the right size to fit the engine. Over to my trusty and ancient Burgess bandsaw to do that. And here's a health and safety warning. Make sure that you do not chop off your fingers with the bandsaw because it's very difficult to pick up the pieces. When you get anywhere near the end of the cut, move your fingers out of the way of the blade. Once I cut the part to size, I cleaned it up once again on the belt sander to remove the bandsaw marks and here I'm using some emery cloth to clean up the edges. I mentioned in the introduction that this is going to be a special mounting base for the engine. I've made a felted pen mark right in the centre. Here I'm using a small twist drill to drill a hole on the mark, but not all the way through. This is just going to be a guide for this thing. It's a cone cutter designed to cut holes in pieces of metal. I'm using it here just to make a cone shaped depression in the centre of the base. And here I'm carefully drilling a hole from one edge of the base to meet up with the cone shaped hole in the centre. The travel of the quill on the drilling machine was insufficient to get through in one go. Once I'd got nearly all the way through, I stopped the machine and lifted up the position of the base so I could drill a bit deeper. And here you see what I've done. Steam engines can be very messy things. What I'm doing is making a base that incorporates some method of draining the oil and water residue that the engine will drop inside the box base. The water can then be piped away from the engine to the main drain which is going to be fitted to the baseboard. And for this reason, the drain area needs to be thoroughly waterproof. I'm going to use some Ron Seal outdoor varnish for this job. Please note this is not the water-based stuff. This is a very old tin and the varnish is getting a bit thick and sticky. This should be more than adequate to waterproof the water drain area. While I was at it though, I painted the entire piece of wood with the same stuff. Without disturbing the cone-shaped hole in the centre, I wiped away the surplus varnish using a cloth. And then to make sure it didn't stick to the bench, I sat it on a ruler. This is quite a good tip, it will stick to the ruler but that really doesn't matter. It's very easy to unstick the ruler once the varnish has dried. I will probably give this base another couple of coats with thinned polyurethane varnish applied with a cloth and it should look good. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.